Hey Summoners, my name is Nathan Ning and I'll be your host for the patch 12.15 rundown. Today we're going to cover the changes and also provide you guys with the updated tier list for all 5 roles and give you an idea of what's going to be good and what's not going to be so good in each role this patch. Winning starts with drafting the right champions and this video will give you an immediate advantage over other players in solo queue. So make sure you're subscribed because we make meta videos like this just to ensure that you're always up to date on what's good and you definitely don't want to miss out. Without further ado, let's begin with the patch rundown. Before we get into the actual balance changes, let's look at one thing that everyone can agree that Riot does well, the skins. 12.15 will introduce a new skin line, the Beast Tamers. The skins that we're going to be seeing are Zatma, Monster Tamer Lulu, and Monster Tamer Vagar. Now that we've covered the skins, let's talk about the upcoming system changes. Both items that build out a Quicksilver Sash are seeing some buffs. For Mercurial Scimitar, the Magic Resist is going up from 30 to 40, and the Movement Speed Duration is going to be buffed from 1 second to a second and a half. Silver Mare Dawn's Magic Resist is going up from 35 to 40, Health is going up from 300 to 350, and the Slow Resist and Tenacity is going from 40% up to 50%. I really don't think that these items entirely deserve buffs. Their main draw should be the CC removing active, not the efficient stats from them. Maybe one is Silver Mare Dawn because no one actually builds that item. We also have some system nerfs coming out. First Strike's bonus true damage is being lowered from 10% down to 9%. This change isn't too significant. I think First Strike is kind of a bait rune for a lot of champions, but those that do use it super well, like Fiddlesticks and certain poke mages, will continue to get a ton of value from it. The last system change that we're going to be seeing is a small nerf to Divine Sunderer. Apparently the item is still overperforming, so the healing is being lowered from 65% to 55%. Kind of weird, because almost all the highest performing top laners build either a Tank Mythic or Gore Drinker, with very few exceptions. Alright, before we look at our updated tier list, I just want to give a shout out to our coaches over at ProGuides.com. Our meta videos like this are a great way to give you push in the right direction, but if you're super serious about climbing, you'll want to go check those guys out. They're all top level players that have spent years climbing the solo queue ladder, and they're ready to share everything that they've learned with you. So, if cramming in years of top tier gameplay into short hour long sessions to instantly get better at the game sounds good to you, you should really go pay them a visit. They're available 24-7, so feel free to head over at any time. Okay, now let's actually get to the tier list. First, we'll start off with the top laners. Aatrox's performance has really shot up lately, becoming one of the best top laners in the game after his adjustments last patch, so we're moving him up to the OP tier. This kind of came as a shocker. The adjustments kind of look like a nerf. An extra 10 HP per level doesn't sound like it'd make up for a lesser healing, especially when his ultimate is up, but apparently, it more than makes up for it. And with bruisers that built Divine Center getting just a little bit weaker this patch, some of his skill matchups like Wukong, Jax, and Camille will slightly be even more in his favor. All in all, he's probably the best pick for carrying games from top lane at the moment. And right behind Aatrox is Olaf, who also moves up to the OP tier this patch. While Aatrox likes to group up and carry team fights hard in the mid game, Olaf's playstyle is pretty much lone wolf. You want to get an early lead and run with it, being a permanent side lane threat. Olaf's only real weakness is being kited in team fights, but if you stick to his side lane, you can very easily one v two the enemy champions that are trying to bring the fight to you instead. It's pretty safe to say that he's by far the best split pusher in the current meta. Wukong's performance in the top lane has fallen off just a little bit slightly, so that, along with Divine Senderer's nerf, has us moving him down to the S tier for now. This one's a bit tentative. He may even need to go down one more tier depending on how much he's affected by the nerf to Divine Senderer. Heimerdinger moves up to the S tier. He either wins or at least neutralizes about every single lane matchup, and scales amazingly as both a team fighter and split pusher. Be sure to actually think about your itemization with him though. A lot of people just go with cookie cutter builds, but he can actually be super flexible depending on the enemy's comp. While Pantheon Jungle is still an ultra trash tier pick, as a solo laner, Pantheon has been doing pretty well lately, and we're moving him up to the A tier. He's sort of like a better functioning Renekton at the moment. He bullies lane hard, and then snowballs that lead to carry in the mid game. He's a bit weaker top than mid, so he can't really roam quite as well as he does when he's right in the middle of the map. But even still, he's a really good pick for shutting down otherwise hard to counter volatile laners. Teemo moves up to the A tier. He definitely does better in some lanes than others, but he's not so situational that he belongs in the B tier. He's at least playable in most lanes and doesn't have to hard win, and has the ability to be really flexible with itemization to counter different foes. Riven has been doing super well lately, so we're moving her back up to the A tier. She's definitely not as OP as she was in the past, where she was god tier in every elo, but with enough mechanics, you can definitely carry a good amount of games with her still. However, I wouldn't really blind pick her, since some of the meta picks can really hard counter her. We'll be moving up Jax to the B tier for this patch. He's no longer so bad that you never really pick him, but the times that you do want to pick him are pretty limited. Basically, the requirements are being against a laner that you beat at all stages of the game, and the enemy team doesn't have an early game jungler that will shut you down. Both Maokai and Gragas moves up to the B tier. We're lumping them together because we have the same thing to say about each one. 
There are situational picks that can definitely hard counter some specific matchups. But even in those cases, it's almost always better to have another tank or juggernaut. These two just aren't that tuned to carry games very well from the top lane at the moment. Now, for the jungle, here's our list. With some pretty big buffs heading his way, Ramis is moving up to the OP tier this patch. I really don't know why he's getting all of these to be honest. Ramis was extremely strong for multiple patches in a row, and the second that he wasn't, Riot immediately buffed him. He wasn't even doing poorly, if anything, he was still strong, but just not overwhelmingly so. I guess they really want him to be more than just okay. That's my impression, don't hate me, sorry. Anyway, Fiddlestick has overall been a lot stronger since his recent buffs, but he's also definitely a champion that does better the higher up in ELO that you go. Our standard tier list is aimed at what we call the middle ELOs of gold and plat, kind of just the average spread, and most champions on it have a pretty similar performance rating in both of those tiers. But occasionally we'll have a champion that does better in one or the other to the point that we should just feel like we should point it out. If you're playing in plat, Fiddlestick is definitely an OP tier pick, but if you're just in gold or lower, you should consider him S tier. He's definitely still strong, but not as easy to pull off as other champions in the OP tier. While both Rek'Sai and Elise are doing super well in high elo, where teams are better at closing out games quickly, outside of Diamond Plus, it doesn't always happen that smoothly. You can definitely get a lot more done with them early, but games get dragged out to late game a lot more often in the rest of the solo queue, so we're demoting them to the A tier for now. Twitch is being moved down to the D tier. In certain metas, he randomly pops up as a pretty successful jungler, but at the moment, even if you snowball with him, it's pretty hard to translate it into much. His biggest weakness is that he really, really struggles to take objectives solo early on. He basically needs at least a mythic item before he can even attempt to do dragon on his own, and that doesn't cut it after the big changes to how valuable those are in 12.14. Now, here's our mid lane tier list. Kennen gets moved up to the OP tier this patch. We've talked about him multiple times in our other meta videos about how Kennen is really slept on as a mid laner. So many people try to make him work top, but it's just not that great. He gets rolled by pretty much all meta champions. Riot is trying to buff him to remedy that, but they're also going to be making him an even more disgusting mid laner. He may end up being the best champion in this role for this patch. Pantheon gets promoted to the OP tier as well. Like with top lane, he's a great pick if you just want to neutralize any laner. Ranged, melee, assassin, mage. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with. Pantheon just wins about every single matchup with his high damage and easy to execute combos. He's placed so much higher here than top lane because, well, you're in the middle of the map, so you could jump anywhere you want. You can roam to help your jungler on either side of your lane, and have options to ult either side lane, pushing your snowball along much harder and faster. Yep, he's he does things harder and faster. Anyway, Vex seems really OP after the recent buffs, but she kind of dropped off a tiny bit, so we're moving her down to the S tier. Nika has been one of our favorite underrated picks for a while now, and now she's doing so well that she needs to be moved up to the S tier. Seriously, you guys shouldn't be sleeping on her. She's pretty easy to play. It's strong all the way up from laning phase to 6 items, and adds nice wombo combo potential to any team comp. Gragas gets demoted to the A tier. He's still a strong laner, but he doesn't carry in the mid to late game nearly as hard as he did before. I'd reserve picking him up for times where he just acts as a hard counter to enemy champions. Seraphine drops down to the B tier. She's still a good champion if you want to coast to a win with a better team, but she's definitely not going to just auto win you games once you make it to the late game anymore. Anyway, let's move things down to the bot lane. While she is getting nerfed this patch, Cypher has been so overwhelmingly broken that we think that she's still going to be good enough for the OP tier. This is definitely subject to change, so be sure you check to the mid-patch update to see if that stands once this goes live. It seems that we overshot Miss Fortune's placement last patch, so we're moving her down to the S tier. She's still that go-to lane bully out of all the normal ADCs, and can very easily carry games that don't drag out too long. Kogma moves up to the S tier. With Enchanters overall being weaker last patch, you'd think immobile hyper carries would be struggling, but Kogma is still going really strong. I know it may not seem like a big number, but the 380 loss on this patch with Kalista has really hurt her. We're moving Kalista down to the D tier. She's already a champion that struggles really badly when you aren't playing with a coordinated duo partner, and with this, there's pretty much no reason to pick her ever. And to finish things off, we have our supports. Heimerdinger's 12.12 buffs made him so broken that he literally does well in every single role, including support. So we're adding him to the support tier list as an OP tier pick. It's not as troll as it sounds. Really, it's a lot like Zyra. He has good poke, disengage, and his ultimate turret makes it super easy to turn enemy ganks into easy 3 kills. Sona is still one of the best scaling supports in the game, but then Chanter nerfs last patch made her a bit less of a guaranteed win if you just make it to certain item breakpoints. So, we're moving her down to the S tier for now. Senna gets demoted to the A tier. If you can make it to the super late game with Senna, she's still a disgusting champion. Eventually, she has a range to outcarry her ADC, but it's a lot harder to get there than it was back when Senna was super strong, mostly due to meta shifts and the nerf to Eclipse on ranged champions. Seraphine moves down to the B tier. As with mid lane, when you pick her as a support, you can happily coast to a win when you have the team gap, but you're not going to contribute much coming back from a loss. 
The nerfs to both her and the enchanter item that you built remove the air from this big elo inflator. You're better off picking any of the higher tiered enchanters if you want to actually be proactive and put effort into winning the game. Alrighty, that concludes our 12.15 patch rundown. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'm really glad that you guys stuck with me here because my voice is kind of shot. Anyway, thanks for being patient with me, and as always, feel free to share your thoughts with me in the comments down below. Also, be sure to join our Discord in the description link below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.